An eye for an eye that may leave the whole world blind. After Ukraine claimed responsibility for attacking the tactically and symbolically significant Russian Crimean Bridge, an attack that killed three people, the Russians have hit back, and hit back strongly. Since the bridge blew up on Saturday, Russia has stepped up its attacks, engaging in a shelling campaign across several regions of Ukraine, including Kiev, the capital, and Zaporizhia, one of the regions that supposedly voted to join the Russian Federation. But this is just the beginning, as Russian state TV has been readying its viewers about the possibility of a nuclear war. But is this all talk and no action, or are we heading for a potential nuclear catastrophe? If this does happen, how will the West respond? Is there any way out of this war, either for Ukraine or for Putin? How will the next phase of the Russia-Ukraine conflict play out? All right, so let's get to it. How will the next phase of the Russia-Ukraine war play out? What is going to happen next? Of course, Amir, Orin, and Hannah, you know the rules. You're gonna have about 30 seconds to give us your first answer. Let's start with you, Amir. So it's a war of wills and of wits right now. Uh, the striking power of Russia has not been sufficient. Now it's the staying power or standing power of both. So it's a war of attrition. It could last like the uh, Spanish Civil War, three years, American Civil War, four years, or the Afghanistan involvement of the Soviets, 10 years, unless there is a compromise. Now, Almut, I'd like to hear from you since we don't have Hannah with us next. Um, so I think I don't even want to go too much into the military aspects because this is not my field. But I think what the war has shown so far is that very dramatic uh, events and developments can happen very quickly with unforeseen consequences. And the escalation spiral is still very much open. Um, the tone everywhere in the West, in Ukraine and Russia, is that they're planning for, you know, the spring. So they are already sure that this war will continue to spring. And here, what I want to talk about, what that does, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does it mean for the people who live in the areas of Ukraine affected by war and winter? Now, you know, Russian state TV is preparing its viewers for the use of, of potential tactical nuclear weapons. Is this just talk? What should we expect, Amir? It's a psychological warfare, of course. Uh, the use of nuclear weapons is such a momentous decision that uh, one uh, does not see Putin ordering it or even the chain of command executing uh, such an order. Obviously, it's uh, in order to coerce Zelensky into agreeing to terms which are not favorable to the Ukraine. However, the Ukraine uh, up to now has almost always refrained from hitting back at Russian territory at the mainland and apparently is not able to evict uh, the Russian forces from the four uh, districts uh, which uh, have been annexed. So uh, something must give. There will be uh, talks regarding ceasefire or uh, Putin will try a desperate blow against the Ukrainian leadership in order to try and to kill or abduct Zelensky. Almut, what is your take on that? On the nuclear threat, well, I would say that uh, since a nuclear power is involved, uh, since Russia considers to be fighting in this war against the West, this is their conclusion, uh, and since he considers Ukraine of um, essential existential national security value, um, the nuclear threat is there and is looming. It doesn't mean that this is something that's going to happen very soon or absolutely going to happen, but we shouldn't we shouldn't make light of it. Um, nuclear powers uh, and those who live in their pathway have for almost 80 years played out scenarios how a nuclear war could happen. And it will be these scenarios and, and this thinking and this theory that they will be having recourse. And I think we would all be wise to be paying attention to that. We should not take this lightly. Amir, you know, I'm interested to hear what your take is in terms of what the point was in the latest round of strikes that we saw in Kyiv. At this point, what is Putin really trying to achieve here? Well, Putin obviously believed 
that he will have uh, a blitzkrieg sort of campaign. Uh, he really meant it when he called it an operation. He did not realize that this is going to be a long, drawn-out uh, war, and he didn't have, and still does not have, an exit strategy. So he is striking back in order to save face, to show that uh, no one uh, is uh, immune, no one can strike at his pet project, the bridge, with Im impunity. But this is emotional, not rational. Almut, I'm interested to hear what your uh, perspective is on that in terms of what you think Putin is trying to achieve right now. I don't want to read Putin's tea leaves. There's a whole industry out there doing exactly that, and I don't particularly hold with it. Um, I, I think it's it's worthwhile to you know to understand that, that Russia, just like any other country, must play to domestic audiences. The missile strikes on various Ukrainian cities over the last days have have sort of you know fed the, the patriotic fervor in certain circles. Um, they are sort of a classic retaliation move. They are also war crimes because they deliberately target civilian arc, um, infrastructure. Um, what is he trying to achieve? I don't know. Um, I'm much more interested in like uh, how can we make this end? How how can we make sure that this does not happen again? That cities all over Ukraine are never again subjected to such missile attacks. Well, we're going to be uh, discussing Nat that Natasha, a little bit. Yeah, I go ahead. ahead. Um, the the one the one uh, uh, point that can be made regarding the use of nuclear weapons mm -hmm. or perhaps not really nuclear warheads but uh, some radiological uh, weapon is that Putin sees the Ukraine as a buffer state. He believes that uh, the Ukrainian territory is uh, separating the West, the hostile West, from the Russian motherland. So he may um, decide to try and contaminate this Ukrainian territory just in order to uh, uh, push the West back and because he uh, believes that Western leaders would not dare put their troops in a contaminated territory. But short of that, there is no plausible scenario for any nuclear employment. We have Hannah Hopko now joining us on the phone from Kiev. I understand that you were having some electricity issues. You know, I, I hope that you were able to hear that last statement about the, the fear of nuclear weapons. As somebody who's living on the ground right now in Ukraine, can you give us kind of some insight as to how concerned Ukrainians are about that nuclear threat? Thank you so much for your question. And I'm really sorry that I cannot join you via Zoom or my phone because electricity is really broken and mm -hmm. Wi-Fi connection is very weak um, after yesterday attack. So, but we will repair uh, all the situation. And I hope next time I'll join uh, to, to your program without any problem. But actually, let's be honest, um, Russian nuclear blackmail, uh, this is not the first time that Russia is blackmailing the whole world and I agree that it's unacceptable um, for Russia to threaten not just Ukraine, but the world with a, um, a nuclear weapon after Ukraine gave up the third largest nuclear power after the Soviet Union was collapsed. And we've seen it before. Remember when Russia, um, uh, Russian military forces started to occupy the Parisia nuclear plant the biggest in uh, Europe. So actually we demanded withdrawal of Russian military and Rosatom represent representatives from the, uh, the Parisian nuclear power plant to ensure nuclear safety at the plant. And we actually asked the US Congress to designate Russia as a state sponsor of terrorists in Ukraine and um, during all uh, last eight months of genocide. And during eight years of ongoing Russian aggression, we are not afraid. We are not afraid of Russian blackmail, of Russian missile attacks on civilian infras uh, civilians, critical infrastructure, because we know Russian imperialistic behavior for centuries. This is not like it's happening in 21st century. Remember previous centuries, genocide organized by Stalin, through uh, famine, man-made 
um, right. Holodomor famine. So actually, I think it's really important for the whole world to wake up and actually to punish a uh, totalitarian regime after um, uh, all these, uh, how to say, unacceptable right. uh, so uh, uh, this, uh, attempt of destroying international uh, rule-based uh, World. So, Hannah, we're going to be getting to the international response and whether or not we've seen enough of a response from the international community uh, after our break. But I'd like to turn to, you know, we're, what we're seeing happen in Russia right now. We're seeing uh, hundreds of thousands of Russians flee the country following Putin's military call-up. So the question is, do the Russian people support this war? Is Putin losing support? Um, or is this just how we're seeing the Western media cover it? Amir, why don't you respond? So... There is uh, obviously a nationalist uh, streak um, in Russian culture and even in the Russian DNA. Uh, they are patriotic. You remember that World War II was called the Great Patriotic uh, War. But nevertheless, there is uh, uh, a big and growing uh, minority um, of uh, dissent. And people are not uh, going to play Putin's game uh, while they, in principle, uh, would like uh, the Ukraine uh, not to join NATO and not to threaten uh, Russia the way he uh, portrays it. Nevertheless, they are not going to be pawns in his game. Hannah, I'm interested to hear your take on this. Um, let's be frank. Uh, and everyone who visited Ukraine, and especially Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, you've seen the San Sofia Cathedral one of the most beautiful cathedrals in Europe, which was built at the beginning of 11th century when Moscow didn't exist. So I think uh, Russian society, instead of uh, supporting this imperialistic behavior, they have to demand from their uh, leadership a real uh, decent uh, government, no poverty, but uh, real uh, pr prosperity. Because what's happening in Russia when people are poor at the level that the only way for them to survive to be killed in Ukraine. So actually for more than 30 years after Soviet Union collapsed, uh, all Russian leadership and especially Putin, after 22 years of his rule in Russia, mm -hmm. he's destroying um, uh, 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 Russian Federation, but remember he said that uh, Soviet Union collapse was the biggest geopolitical catastrophe. I am shocked and appalled by the vicious attack um, on Kiev and other Ukrainian cities. Russia once again has shown to the world what it stands for. It is terror and brutality. Those who are responsible have to be held accountable. We are mourning the victims, and I sent my heartfelt condolences to our Ukrainian friends. I know Ukrainians will not be intimidated, and Ukrainians know that we will stand by our side, their side as long as it takes. But we send a clear message to all the Ukrainians. We are supporting you every possible way, and what we have to do is definitely deliver air defense from, uh, from the Allies' side so that the Ukrainians can protect their cities, their civilians, because Russia is definitely escalating to harm the civilians. We are with the victims. We stand by Ukraine. All right, so let's get to it. At this point, it's hard to believe, but it's been uh, just almost eight months, if not over eight months, uh, since the beginning of the war in Ukraine. Has the international response, in your opinions, been sufficient? Have sanctions had any impact or have they gone too far? Remember, you guys each have 30 seconds to give your answer. Hannah, let's start with you. We need tougher sanctions to uh, push Russians to withdraw its troops from Ukrainian territory. And the success would have been happened if we avoid the genocide and not be in the eve of Russian blackmail of the usage of nuclear weapons. All right, Amir, let's hear what you have to say. Well, the Allies uh, have supported Ukraine only to the extent of avoiding defeat, but they have not given it uh, enough to assure victory. And Almut, what's your take? Well, I would say 
the, the sanctions have certainly had an impact, but I think they've not had the impact that they were intended for. Um, and that would have been to either stop Russia, either make Russia stop the war or lose the war. And, and clearly they're not having that impact, and I don't think they will anytime. Uh, the response overall has been massive in some areas, such as uh, providing Ukraine with weapons, but has been really um, anemic and just not present in other areas, particularly in diplomacy. All right, so that brings us to the question, what should the international community be doing to stop this conflict? And I'd like to hear your take on that. Why don't you dive into that a little bit further? So first, it's not conflict, it's Russian genocide against Ukraine. It's really important to tell the truth. Truth matters. Second, Russia should be recognized as a state sponsor of terrorism. Uh, third, more weapons, especially uh, um, air defense system like IRST from Germany, NASA from uh, US should be provided together with uh, more HIMARS, ATACOMS, and fighter jets. So weapons, weapons, weapons. And sanctions. Sanctions should include also um, uh, Russian industry like Rosatom, banking sector, and individuals like Mr. Gunjaev. FSB guy uh, who is so-called leader, leader of so-called Russian church. And of course, it's really important. I agree with the previous experts that U.S. and uh, EU and actually the whole West, they should uh, uh, pursue the strategy of victory, not being afraid of Ukraine defeating Russian totalitarian, mm -hmm. totalitarianism. Because remember, the Soviet Union disintegration was a defeat of communism, but not the defeat of colonialism. Now, Almut, I want to hear your take. You know, with labeling Russia a state uh, sponsored sponsor of terrorism, uh, be effective in any way in terms of stopping Putin and stopping this ongoing invasion of Ukraine? No, of course well, not. Uh, it is essentially. It is. Sorry, you were asking me, right? Yes. Um, it is essentially a legal, it is a legal designation um, um, by the U.S. or possibly by European countries, and that legal designation would then have some practical implications, also primarily in terms of trade and security measures. But I don't see that these implications would be any stronger um, or even additional to what the sanctions are already doing. It would be a very strong symbolic legal gesture, but it wouldn't affect Russia's ability to conduct war. Now, you know, going back to the issues of uh, the issue of nuclear weapons more specifically, uh, potentially being used in this conflict, what should the international response be if Russia does cross that line? Well, uh, it's really unthinkable, but the entire international mechanism, which was put into place by the victors of the Second World War, has disintegrated because if you have five permanent members of the Security Council, each with a veto power, and one is um, aligned perhaps with another one with China against uh, the other three, as well as uh, the rest of uh, the world, it's impossible to conduct global diplomacy this way. And if the West uh, takes uh, measures against Russia, it will drive it into the arms of China. So you will have a bipolar world again, but this time with Beijing against Washington. Interesting. You know, I'd like to, to ask you, Hannah, like most conflicts, the war in Ukraine has sadly been falling out of the headlines. That's a reality. But it looks like Elon Musk uh, has specifically gotten the issue trending again with some of his very controversial tweets that he's made. Uh, he made some insensitive comments asking people to vote on his version of a peace plan. Do you think, well, I guess the question is, is the influence of ignorant foreign influencers like Elon Musk beneficial, or is it just adding fuel to this fire? Actually, um, Elon Musk should produce cars. This is where he is perfect in. But on foreign policy, he needs to study the issue uh, in detail before saying something. So Russia should be removed from the UN Security Council. This is really important. And actually, if we give, if we give in, uh, to nuclear blackmail. So actually, what it means for the future, uh, that uh, um, the future will be nothing but just nuclear blackmail. And tomorrow, China could 
start blackmailing uh, the world with the usage of nuclear power or other. We have nine countries with nuclear weapons, and uh, some of these countries are ruled by authoritarian regimes. So we have to stop allowing Russia to blackmail the whole world. And the West has enough leverage to be brave and uh, tough to send Russia a clear message. It's about also how to say uh, strategic stability. And I, I hope it's time to rem uh, remind Russia about this. You know, it's interesting because we've been discussing, obviously, what the international community, what international leaders need to be doing to support Ukraine more. But obviously, as winter's approaching, we're really facing a very serious issue with skyrocketing prices, a high cost of living across the world. Is it possible, is there a scenario in which the West could actually withdraw some of its support for Ukraine? And what would that mean for Ukraine? Amir. The, yeah, well, the West will not uh, declare uh, that it is withdrawing its support. But in effect, uh, and because of what you mentioned, because of the domestic um, reluctance uh, in the United States, as well as in uh, certain European countries, to send uh, boys into harm's way, what you will see is uh, a long grinding attrition. So this will not be enough. There will be pressure behind the scenes on Zelensky mm -hmm. uh, to meet Putin's terms one way or the other. And a quick 20 second answer. Russia had created the energy crisis in Europe, in Europe artificially. The same they did with global hunger threat. Remember, by blocking uh, Black Sea ports and not allowing Ukraine to export grain. So maybe it's time to uh, unite efforts and to punish Russia, finally. Not to wait for another blackmail right. like uh, we see with energy.